What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 4 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Malekith and Nagaron Incorporated Immortal Empires campaign. Thank you for calling the Nagarond Inc. customer service line. All our agents are permanently busy, so we will not be taking your call, but a complimentary basket of misery has been dispatched to your address. Anyway, as we saw last time, the Temple of Cain was given its due in two ways, I suppose, as A, we chose Hellebron for our first confederation and significantly increased the, uh, uh, the breadth of our empire, and on top of that, Malekith finally managed to hunt down Valkia and destroyed her main stack outside of Ashrak, pleasing both Cain and Korn that day as it was a Pyrrhic victory, and I think they would both really appreciate it. This time, we are going to briefly take or quickly take Ashrak with Malekith's army and then split up as Kron Hellebron continues her conquest of the north while Malekith probably moves to the south. Before we get started, though, the previous episode has reached the requisite 300 likes and 30 comments that uh, were required and thus we continue with the accelerated video update schedule and i make the same offer again 300 likes and 30 comments for two episodes per day uh drop them if you're interested anyway uh, let's begin with what we gotta do the last time we had a little bit of extra money come our way so we're going to start upgrading nagarond as we've been waiting to do so for quite a while we just got to be careful not to bankrupt ourselves hag grief is also really in need of an upgrade though hmm we could pop a diktat as well for the increased growth but i feel like maybe we want to hold on to the amount of slaves is the 10 percent 200 gold saved from this really all that much probably not might not be worth our time though on the other hand we will have to build up this thing the face of hag grief and we can reduce the uh, yeah, we can reduce the price of that as well. Fine, fine, fine. Slave drive it is. Uh, like so. Another diktat. And we will go for a dark hold. Slight amount of uh, money. And, well, we're not going to uh, speed it up at the current time. Chill Road, let's upgrade you. Then we are going to get rid of the... Mm, yeah, we don't need this military building here, I don't think. Because we currently have a copy of it in Nagaron, though we will be deleting it and swapping it out in terms of its place. Uh, the Great Arena, ooh, 900 for repairs. It's a little bit on the expensive side. Maybe we can wait on that one. I don't think we need the Plateau of Dark Steeds in the, uh, in the main settlement here either. Otherwise, Kawark, I would like you to build up the Altar of Cain so that we can have the Witch Elves and Sisters of Slaughter available for Hellebron, which will hopefully happen next turn, and then I can, well, pardon, two turns, and while I would love to upgrade the Guild Halls and whatnot, I don't think it's, uh, uh, it's possible right now with the amount of money we have. Looks like we don't have enough money to upgrade the Altar of Ultimate Darkness, but it's okay. We should be able to as soon as we do this battle, and, uh, get the 5,000 gold, as well as a circlet of iron. So, yeah. Plus, we get... Ooh. The massive amount of control that we get from that is also tremendously useful. But currently, we have Happy Populous everywhere, on top of Sacrifice to Authority. So, we may want to actually wait on that so that we use it at the most opportune moment. So, we shall see. Now, Moran C... Moransti, uh, you are going to get deleted. I think you're costing us money and you no longer serve a purpose as Valkia is not going to attack through this way. Who else can move? Hellebron, you can certainly move and thus I believe you should be able to go into raiding stance close to Dagrak's end, like so. Oh, we can build a... Uh, wait, 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 wait. You can go into raiding. You could probably build a cheap artisan's house. Yes. And I feel like we're going to need that uh, growth uh, growth upgrade as fast as we can get, or the Glory to Malekith, Iron Fist, and then a Adaptation for the growth, growth plus 30. It's really going to help us out in the early game and will allow us to build the, uh, the Artisan's House and the Crafting Districts rather than using the High Elf Manors for growth, because, uh, yeah, these things don't give us much in the way of... Uh, money in fact they give us no money so yeah anyway that's the plan uh otherwise i believe we are good and unless there's diplo we can go to next turn and i don't see any diplo Karan Kar, man, I, I'm shocked that they're still alive, that Nagareth hasn't destroyed them. But I guess since Torox died early, 
and we are not bogged down fighting with uh, the ancestral throng. The uh, the drowned are doing a decent job together with Karand Kar at fighting Nagareth, which we'll hopefully be able to take advantage of. Anyway, now let's skip, 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 and end the turn, and then proceed to Dagrax and and Ashrak. If Hellcroft does not leave Ashrak, we should be able to get a nice uh, big battle out of it. On the other hand, they might attack. No, they are. Why? Why would you go there? What are you doing? Okay, well, Hellcro Hellcroft's obviously dead. Uh, <laughs> I don't understand why he did that. Uh, Ava, you are at 8 out of 10 loyalty. Ooh, we could get the Satchel of Potions, which ain't too bad. Or we could get 2.5k. Oh, man. That's a hard choice. Her loyalty is pretty good, and if she wins another battle, there's a decent likelihood that her loyalty will go up. I would like the Satchel of Potions. Hmm... Yeah, I think, I mean, late in the game, I would pay, you know, hundreds of thousands of gold to acquire satchels of potions. Maybe not hundreds of thousands, but tens of thousands. Uh, so 2.5k, yeah, no, he is mine. Also, let's give this a quick read. An Asura mage has been captured in a recent raid. Your lord desperately wants to make them their personal slave. However, this mage has a gift for prophecy, so it might be beneficial to claim him as your own. He is mine. Hated foes are not kept around for pleasure. Have the slave dragged to the dungeons and torture him until he reveals everything he knows. Uh, entertaining. Alrighty, settlement sacked. The chill road. Spiteful peaks. Oh, you... You went for that again, but it was... Okay, good luck with that. Uh, ready for duty, Furion is back if we need him. Potion of toughness, all right, Malekith. You're gonna get even tougher. Where is that? Uh, is it up top? Yeah, it's up top. Satchel of potions for you. And then what we want to do... Okay, wait, wait, let's see if I can... Let's see if I can do this right. Ashrak is sparsely defended, which means... Malekith, you are going to go this way. Like so, and you're going to chase down Hellcroft. Ava, you are going to give Malekith one of these masters. Hopefully one of the more useful ones, not this one. Uh, yeah, let's give him the tough one. I will probably swap that one out later on anyway, but... For now, you're going to do this. The tough one, I think that was the first one, to Malekith. And we will replace the Hurt Dread Spears. One, two, okay, that's one too many. And, okay, we can't replace the Bleak Sword, but... Uh, well, whatever. Uh, or... Wait, let me just, just... Let me just... What if we take out the Bleak Swords altogether, put the Dread Spears in, we can give the Bleak Swords either to... Uh, uh, either to Hellebron or something. Let me do that somehow. Alright, now... We could lose a couple of Dark Shards and replace them with the Dark Riders with Repeater Crossbow so that Malekith has an easier time chasing things down. It'll weaken his army in some ways. But uh, not a not in a horrible way. You know what? I think we'll do that. You, Dark Shard, and ah, uh, we need to keep the ones with shields so you can stay there. And then you can go there, and then we'll replace them with Dark Riders with Repeater Crossbows. I mean, Malekith's entire army is going to get completely retooled later, so it doesn't change things. Malekith, you are going to chase down Mr. Hellcroft. Who hopefully will not be able to get far enough away at... No, okay, good. All right, good, and you will kill him with an auto resolve. So well, and then we're in our own territory, so we could heal up quite nicely. Oh wow, that that damage just way more than I thought it would. Uh, do we want the slaves or do we want them? No, I think we still want the money. I'd love to get the slaves, like I really would, but nobody take that out of context. Uh, <laughs> A ransom captives, we need all the money we can get right now. We're just uh, very, uh, very light on it. Malekith, you could go into March Stance and head down here. And, oh! Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Kotep is heading towards Grumbrindle directly. In theory, Grumbrindle's army should be much stronger. Tomb Kings really struggle against dwarfs early on because they have uh, a lack of armor piercing and the dwarfs are all heavily armored, but uh, I guess we'll see. Ava, up here, please. Auto resi really? This? This. Okay, fine. We're gonna manually fight this super quickly. I'm gonna max speed through it because it's a waste of our time, let's face it. Uh, for Malekith, I guess the question is, do we heal up more in Chill Road or do we just start heading down this way? We could go and take the Circle of Destruction, although maybe we want to avoid having a border with Nagareth right now. I guess another question is whether we would uh, trust Gromby to... Uh, to take out Kotep. Hmm. 
And, oh, hello, Siggy. Oh, what if we go towards Siggy, kill him, and then advance this way instead? Oh, that's tempting. I mean, let's face it, it's pretty much inevitable that we will get into a war with Sigvald, although he doesn't hate us right now, funnily enough. If we could force him into a fight with, like, Nagareth, maybe he'll come down here. Oh, man, that's a hard choice. But if he declares war on us, we can't let him just move around through our territory either. You know what, I think regardless we're going to move towards him, so Malekith, you're going to start moving this way. We'll see where he goes, especially consider this. As soon as... Uh, oh, yes, gold mine. Uh, as soon as... Gold mine, please. Uh, as soon as Valkyrie is destroyed, which will be soon, um, Siggy will no longer be at war with her and will probably back off, which is possibly a problem. Uh, two Dagrax and a Yugo Crone Helebron. Sack value 5k. Really? Huh. It might actually be worth sacking. Uh, however, what it is worth is, well, we'll have to fight on the walls, so we'll do this. And Celebron is on her horse. Perhaps it might be better to get everybody off their mounts for the battle and allow them to go up the walls instead. I will think about it, but we don't have Siege Attacker on her, so we can't attack this turn anyway, so it doesn't change things. Uh, yeah, we're still losing massive amounts of money. We really need Ava to transfer her forces partially to, well, I guess mostly to the uh, Black Ark. Speaking of the Black Ark, you're in range of Malekith, right? Yes. Just providing that additional, uh, additional healing via Dread Expansion. So, well, uh, is there anything that we can upgrade for cheap that would give us a decent amount of reward for it? Altar of Ultimate Darkness, we could upgrade you. Uh, Spiteful Peaks, the Great Arena. I'm gonna wait on healing you or repairing you. We could build a cheap Artisan's House, though. And Kragroth Deep, don't trust it. Let's build the Altar. Oh, wow. That's that's iffy. That's really iffy. You know what? Let's see how much money we get out of Ashrak. Or taking Ashrak back, I, I should say. Uh, Alright, manual fight this super quick fight battle. I can't believe this won't let us auto-resolve. Oh, auto-resolve. Why are you like this sometimes? Not a big deal, however. Damn, I didn't check if they had any bound abilities or not, which I most definitely should have. I doubt that they do, but who knows. I don't know if it's Valkia's own army or the armies of her faction that have that, uh, uh, that Burnination ability, the Piercing Bolts of Burning. Anyway, you guys are going to be the front line, like so. You're going to be the real front line because you have the most HP and then most of the damage will be done by... Hey, you guys, like so, then we will have the more hurt units guard you here, and... I don't know, you... here. Is that it? Did I forget anybody? Uh, I forgot the Corsairs with hand bows, which I should not have done, so you guys can go here, and... Oh. For some reason, I keep expecting these guys to have Vanguard deployment, even though they don't. Alright, here, here, and you can go out there, Master. You stay in the middle of the pack, start battle, uh, you... Can move forward and in fact everybody can move forward are they gonna move towards us yes indeed they are all right so you guys can all be group I don't know, two group up let's turn off your skirmish mode which i in fact already did and then let's speed it up uh wait we should hit to the enemy lord with spirit leech well actually not a really a lord but uh you know still spirit leech you go towards this like so is there another warhound set over on the side nope but we can continue speeding back up there we go Deal with those warhounds for us, please. And what do we have here? Aspect of the Dread Knight. Not crazy useful to us at the current time. Uh, you guys go after that Marauder Horseman set. And the rest of you just fire on whatever you can. As well. Alrighty, and I guess as soon as we find the enemy Lord, who's still hidden in the trees... Ah, there we go. I was just waiting for that Spirit Leech. Oh, I didn't turn off your skirmish mode? My bad, I absolutely should have. You can fight in melee. You absolutely can. And this, it looks like this uh, flank is safe right now, so we're good. You're gonna fight here, you're gonna fight here. And uh, you know what, I'm gonna manually tell everybody to fight. I wasn't gonna, I was gonna tell them all to just attack together, but it looks like this time around, not ideal. Uh, you guys attack this, you guys attack the uh, Warhounds, I probably should have backed off on those units, and I guess we can watch the rest of this. Let's pop an aspect of the Dread Knight on you, just so we can scare those units off. And you know what, you charge into me. In fact, you guys are already badly hurt. There we go. 
Perhaps I should not have charged the sorceress in. You know, I charge back in. These are chaos warriors, after all, not uh, not marauders. Just got to keep an eye on the sorceress from getting too badly hurt. But let's face it, the enemy will be destroyed soon. Uh, archers or crossbows firing to the enemy. Looks good to me. This chaos warrior unit still needs to be destroyed. Ooh, they're mauling in this poor, poor unit. Let's move our uh, uh, let's move our hand bows to hit them in the back. And then all of you need to attack them as well. You're blocked, so move back here. Hounds are being chased. And the battle should be ours shortly. Uh, in fact, you all target the same unit. And you can Spirit Leech the enemy Lord unit. In fact, you turn around and attack this. Where's the second hand bow unit's fighting? Good. Uh, you guys chase so that the enemy don't fight. You can join in against... Yeah, you know what, let's say this unit. Alrighty. Had to control a little bit. I mean, let's face it, there's there's far too few units here for this to be worthy of a uh, of a cinematic battle, so we're not going to bother with that. Now, this is an opportunity to see the uh, Corsairs fight, though I do love Black Art Corsairs. I really dislike Dread Spears and uh, Oblique Swords even for the cost, as in I'm willing to use Empire State troops of the same level, though I also dislike Swordsmen, uh, i.e. Spears, but uh, yeah. I do love some Black Art Corsairs, so we'll be getting plenty of those as we go. Anyway, with that, the battle ends. Just gonna chase down a few extra troops. I don't know if it's possible or necessary. Well, I actually do know that it's possible, but I don't know if it uh, does anything for us, is what I mean. You wanna use a, a spell to speed this up on this poor little unit? Uh, that should be good, and the rest of you just kill all of those Chaos Warriors. There we go. They certainly take a while to die. Good enough. You know, you know that should have been auto-resolvable, like, what is this? 95 losses, but the uh, the units that were already hurt were hurt from Malekith's army. I do like this whole unit swap-out thing. I do think that uh, worked out reasonably well for us in this particular case. And if uh, if the enemy does not sally out, we should be able to push up north with uh, Ava and perhaps help, uh, help Helebron out before transferring this to the Black Ark. Anyway, we are going to occupy rather than loot and occupy. Why would we destabilize a cash cow province like Grand? We want to then, we have plenty, plenty of control. Uh, so demand highborn hostages is not going to be super useful. Uh, income from post-battle loot faction-wide, eh? But it's 50 slave costs per turn, so we can't afford this right now. And same with this. I guess we have to go read Dark Portents pretty much everywhere. Which is what we've been doing, to be fair. Except you. You are in demand highborn hostages. Nagarond. For the public order. Eh, it's fine for now. Alrighty, looks good. We have 4,000 money, which means we can, in fact, upgrade the Altar of Ultimate Darkness, which, ooh, looks like Mr. Torvig is going to attack at Torvig. Uh, we are going to need to summon a lord. Oh, man, I was hoping not to use a... Uh, an expensive one. Furion, you should be ready, right? Yes. You're not a caster. Hopefully it's enough. It will be really irritating to lose this place. But, uh, well, if we do, we do. You're, you can have inspiring presence. Uh, can we give you any cheap item that I'm not concerned about losing? Mm, Alright, I gotta give that talisman of protection to somebody, but no. It doesn't look like it. <laughs> Evil choir master. <laughs> I don't know why I find that so funny. Uh, it's, it's just unnecessarily edgy, but I love it. Anyway, I guess with that, we're ready to end the turn and proceed. Unless there's another cheap building that we can build, but you know what? No, our money is still too tight. Skip, 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 and outpost available. We do need to build the outpost with our dwarfen friends, but uh, we'll wait until we have a higher amount of allegiance. It's not like we can spend it if we build it right now anyway, right? So, why bother? Well, let's see if... Uh now let's see if Sigvald decides to declare war on us. And otherwise, generally, where he goes and... Oh! They're going to sally out. Fantastic! Absolutely fantastic. This means that Hillebron will be able to make use of her executioners. And uh, we'll get to see those guys in action to get to the Sisters of Slaughter, plus Hillebron herself. On top of the fact that we won't have to have Ava go here, or will not have to uh, take the walls of the slow way. I love it. Well done, Chaos. Here we go. Death comes. We are your doom. 
Alrighty, here we go. Hellebron's debut. Granted, I don't believe that this is uh, can that this can be considered a major battle, and thus we will have another fight at some point in this episode. But as it is Hellebron's debut, she does have to uh, uh, she does have to fight. Besides, it's a decent amount of troops, and we'll see how they fare. Now, in terms of deployment, we have a very nice hill where we can use our dark shards to great effect, and our flanks are protected by an impassable terrain as well as half our forces being hidden in the forest here and battle is going to be joined with the flesh hounds of corn chasing hellebron actually not chasing hellebron but instead moving directly towards our executioners of cain perhaps not the brightest thing to do you uh, uh, you flesh hounds and they should be destroyed fairly quickly at this rate damn flesh hounds are huge though they're basically the size of horses they're still good boys though you're all gonna die but you get a pet just you though Okay, you too. All right, anyway, uh, those guys are out, though, and now here come the rest of the enemy forces. Now, what we want to do here is, since the enemy is going to be forced to be funneled up this hill, we want them to essentially gather as many troops right here as possible, and thus we will not be committing all of these forces, essentially just using them to uh, guard this flank and this flank. Commit all the enemy forces so that we can make use of that uh, spirit leech, not spirit leech, uh, pit of shade item as well as allow our executioners to hold the line anchor the line where they can be of the most effectiveness let's hope that this works Seth and we do have two masters and a death hag fighting together with the executioners plus uh, Crone Hellebron herself so this should work quite well I think and he's gonna get screwed over like this fairly quickly there we go and they just keep piling up and that's just more target a true target rich environment for our dark shards there. Crone Hellebron right in the, the thick of things right now. And that's where Cain extols his followers to be. And here come the Chaos Warriors, but this is what we've been waiting for. So, so many units in a single blob now, and unable to go up that hill because of our executioners holding the Chaos Warriors back. And now this is going to dish out a massive, absolutely massive amount of damage to most of the enemy army. And this really completely screws them over, which is, uh, well, which is fantastic from our perspective. Plus, I've always loved the effect of the Pit of Shades. Doesn't it just look fantastic? I mean, it's such, it's so simple but it's uh, I've always enjoyed it possibly I have a little bit of a bias because as many of you know the vampire counts are my favorite faction and they do have the uh, lord of lore of shadows in addition to the lore of uh, vampires and thus I have a tendency to use this particular spell a lot especially when you have tons and tons of zombies and skeletons whose deaths or true deaths you don't care about you can freely pop that spell where uh, they can be uh, clipped by it anyway as we can see the damage is pretty severe that single spell basically destroyed three units almost four units and well yeah almost four units this this unit of chaos warriors i think has mostly been damaged by our executioners and by hellebron speaking of hellebron she uses her ability and everything's nice and red and caney and i'm sure that cornate troops might uh, find this pleasant as well so i'm not entirely sure who to uh, who to give this one to as in who would appreciate it more Man, I can't believe they still haven't fixed the uh, blood textures flickering on the ground thing. That's been a bug for as long as I can remember. I wonder why it's so hard to fix. Alrighty, well, the, that aside, it looks like the battle is going very much our way, and it looks like the rest of our troops have arrived. The enemy lord has been caught by Hellebron and refuses to fight, is in fact terrified of it, and the units that were guarding the flanks here are now hitting the enemies in the flanks and said, short battle at 2 minutes and 22 seconds, and I do believe it's about over. And they got absolutely ripped apart and trapped where they didn't want to be, and thus they're done for. I guess we'll have to wait until the next battle to see the Sisters of Slaughter truly in action, because they weren't really necessary here. Though, to be fair, really only the Executioners, the Dark Shards, and the Heroes were really necessary here, because of the uh, of our ability to take hold of that terrain. Lovely. 
Alrighty, well, we're going to do our best to chase the enemy off since they attacked us in the... Uh, uh, they attacked us in the field. They will return to their garrison positions. And the more enemy troops we hunt down, the more likely we can auto-resolve without having to uh, suffer much in the way of damage. And you want to get... Uh, want to watch Helebron get at least a few hits in there with her dual swords. And oh, here come our masters to help out, just to uh, speed this up a little bit, and now oh, he's getting back up after that. I just want to watch the death animation, then we'll speed it back up to normal. Alrighty, jump right into the screen, why don't you? Alright, the death hag is here as well. And she actually managed to catch up to these three. But I guess soon she'll have a uh, blood cauldron or a shrine or whatnot, and... Oh, down he goes. Does not lose his head, but I guess that's okay. We can always take his skull for Kane later on. Anyway, we're gonna fast forward this. A short battle, perhaps, but not to worry. As I said, since this is a relatively minor battle, I'd like to uh, find a second one and before we call this episode, so we still have that to look forward to, wherever and whatever it may be. And uh, let's see. We're gonna cast another Pit of Shade in the front of this unit of Chaos Warriors just to damage them a little bit further. Man, Hellebron probably dished out a massive amount of damage this particular episode. Let's find out just how much as soon as the battle ends. Alrighty, there we go. Not a difficult fight, but made largely super easy by the uh, rubric of Dark Dimensions. That, uh, uh, that, uh, Pit of Shades, there we go, that's the name of the spell. That Pit of Shades trapped so, so many enemies and damaged them so heavily that, uh, well, we can see the degree to which, uh, Crone Hellebron outdid the rest of her army in terms of damage. In fact, did about half of the kills of the entire army. The Executioners, however, were absolutely no slouches, or is getting 12k damage and 63 kills, obviously much more than anybody, but that includes the range units, which were firing the entire time. 7.3k is very respectable on the Sisters of Slaughter as well, and, uh, well, at least in part because of they were uh, chasing stuff down, but they also sat a lot of the battle out, waiting for the enemies to move in, so good job to them. Uh, very little money, so we're going to enslave and heal up. And Dagrax End will fall next turn. I'm really good, curious to see what's going to happen with Grimbrindle and these guys. And, ah, it looks like he's destroyed Katap's army. And, huh. I'm almost tempted him, tempting, tempted to tell him to take Rothgar's Spire. And, uh, we'll see about that. Altar of Ultimate Darkness Besieged. Well, that's hardly surprising. Uh, maybe we send Ava this way? She could certainly relieve them. And then she could meet up with uh, with Hellebron. I suppose if we are to give Malekith, for example, the Ice Blades when he reaches level 10, which will be next turn, he doesn't necessarily need the Fire Sorceress, and we could send her to join Hellebron. That said, Hellebron is supposed to have a... Uh, a sorceress of beasts, mostly because we need Pan's Impenetrable Pelt to help out the uh, relatively fragile Sisters of Slaughter and such. Hmm. Let me think about this. Well, either way, Malekith, you know what, fine, you're gonna lose Kagren. It's a little bit unfortunate to lose that Forbidden Rod, though, because it allows Malekith to cast. We could also wait on that one, and ooh, Siggy's headed back to where he came from. He's actually liking us more and more. But you know what? Allow him to go all the way back there, and that's when we turn on him. Now, that might be, uh, now that might be ideal. And I also don't want to interrupt this while it's happening, so we can take more territory out here while we do. Anyway, uh, you are going to auto-resolve Dagrax End. It should be very weak after all that auto-resolve. And it's ours. Ooh. Luton Occupy. 3k. No, but lowering it. Wait. It's already going to be at level 1, isn't it? No matter what we do here. Because... Huh. We're taking... It's at tier 2, meaning it'll get reduced to tier 1 when we take it. So no matter what, if it's... Yeah, this is going to be worth it. The Provincial Instability is a little bit annoying, but we're going to sack it. And then we're going to occupy it. 
sack and occupy. Spell resistance. Obs hey, the cauldron of blood for Gloria Soulforger. Oh, I thought I thought that was for uh, for Crone Helebron, who won't get it until rank ten, and she is eight experience short. You gotta be kidding me. Alrighty, well, occupy the place. Yeah, it'll be problematic in terms of its public order, though we could always pop a diktat and solve that situation. Hey, we got the Cauldron of Blood for occupying. And there we go, the Legion of the Gore Queens uh, has been destroyed, and Cain's ambitious ambitions, rather, in the north seem to have outweighed a corn, and we bled them dry. Ice blades are available now, and the Crows of Cain as well. So, well, uh, we're going to repair the place. That's much cheaper than 5k. And we are also going to I guess build up the artisan's house though hmm 44 growth you know what I think we actually need growth first it's not like this is a province that's we're going to care a crazy amount about now Helebron your army is fine as it is at least until we can get those sisters of slaughter and witch elves up and running from here though we can recruit them now and we'll be doing so soon. Ava, you're going to move this way, possibly to relieve the army at the altar of ultimate darkness. And then maybe even loop around to Iron Frost. It would be ideal if you could uh, take that so that we don't have to do so with, uh, with Celebron, which gives her free time. Now there is the quest to consider. We can't do it right now because we... Hmm, you know what? For the quest, maybe we keep Hagren. And then we swap her out after the quest. I think that's the way to do it. And I think we continue following Sigvald to take Nagrar and the uh, Frozen City over here. Maybe we raid them for a little while. And then by the time we're ready, Celebron will have moved out here, perhaps. I would really like to join up with, uh, with Malice there. On the other hand... Hmm, and we could move southward and attack through Blacklight Tower and start annoying these guys. I was actually hoping that they would destroy Karan Kar, that's the funny thing. But we could always declare war on Karan Kar and take them out right after. It's not like they're going to be very strong on the defense. Also, Ancestral Throng, Torveg, yes, we will kill Torveg. Though I expect Torveg will actually attack us next turn, and we'll see if we can hold. I'm not entirely sure. Alrighty, well, that decides it. Malik, if you are heading out to... Let's head you out to Spike to reach an... Oh, you're going to be out of range of this thing. Which will mean you'll heal less, which means we're going to move you... Oh, you won't be able to move far enough, will you? Maybe? Hmm. Let's find out. Let's see how far we can go, because we want Malik to heal up as much as possible. Six and two versus... What's the difference with this thing up and running? Versus six and two. Oh, it won't be useful right now because you're not in Dread Expansion anyway. Okay, well, that means we can head to uh, Spite Reach. Head to Spite Reach, then. And then we should have enough heals or enough uh, HP on most of these troops to be able to do that quest battle. Alrighty, now we do have a little bit of cash. We are still losing cash per turn, but we're getting there. We're getting closer to fixing the situation. Now let's finally repair you, Great Arena. Ashrak, a little bit expensive. Oh, I should have built that up when Malekith was there to actually make use of his construction reduction bonus. You know what, he could always move back for a second and then come back here. We could always build stuff here instead. Uh, 1200 for the guild halls, more money? Yes. Uh, Black Pillar, how much does this cost? Well, we will need more growth. It's another five slaves per turn, unfortunately. You know what, I think we can hold off on that one, maybe. And just for a little while. Otherwise, I guess we're good to end the turn. Yes, 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 which means we'll be able to fight again. Which I am excited for. All right, so here's what we do. Skip, 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 outpost, skip. And, ooh, wait. Helebron, you now have access to Champion of Cain. Fantastic. Uh, Eviscerate is at rank 12. Do these two lock each other out? I can't actually tell. I genuinely can't tell if those lock each other out. That's not good. I don't think so. No, it doesn't look like it. Nah, it's not locked out. That's fine. Diplomatic relations, minus 25 with Cult of Pleasure. Oh, no. 
<laughs> however will we uh, however will we uh, survive that uh we have the second cauldron available here secrets of the cauldron but i think we want to head towards where are we here uh this is buffs for the sisters which we don't have yet playthings of the queen loyalty plus two for new recruits and income from slaves all regions faction wide and then we want to get that blood queen for regeneration because it makes her impossible to kill or at the very least, very difficult to kill. Anyway, I just wanted the little tiny bit of extra money for everybody. Uh, let's also build the Artisan's House at Ashrak. And you know what? Let's double check the buildings that we can build here. Kragrot Deep, I'm not invested in you, so I'm not going to build anything there. And that's it. All right. Skip. And in the turn. Malekith, tis time to fight. Oh, although... Hmm. So the problem with the fighting there is hmm we want to save it for a time when we confederate don't we oh we actually will get a fight i'm mistaken welch will attack valiant defeat apparently at the altar of ultimate darkness we don't have a caster to rely upon sadly so let's hope that the beastmaster can uh, can do something he's a relatively weak lord in terms of his fighting capability but at least he does have overwhelm so we'll be able to reduce the uh, abilities of those units let's let's see if we can survive Accepted. all righty here we go an actual siege this is one of those things that uh, make sfo makes more possible just by virtue of the fact that it makes the ai more aggressive and thus more likely to actually besiege you i'm also uh, i'm also excited to see how this whole siege thing looks with the uh, with the graphic changes I do wish that they would change the, the uh, pop-in of the textures, but that's uh, that's related to the base game and has nothing to do with the actual textures. Ooh, what do we have down here? Uh, pit with a bunch of skeletons around pyres and cages, some sort of punishment thing, where they drop cages full of people into these uh, coals or something. I'm not entirely sure what that is, but, well, that's what they're doing. Dark elves, anyway. Uh, alrighty, well... We have deployed on two sides of the map with very limited number of troops. So two melee troops, two uh, units of range troops, and one hero. And then the same thing here. Two range troops, two melee troops, and uh, one hero slash lord. In the hopes that we can knock all of the enemies out here. Uh, whether that uh, is possible it remains to be seen. The bounce power is in the enemy's favor for now. But we have the walls and we have the towers as well. And the towers obviously are going to try to focus down the enemy siege towers here. And then on the other side of the map, it'll be the, uh, uh, it'll be the enemy, whatchamacallit? Oh, whatchamacallit? Ram, battering ram, there we go. I couldn't quite remember the name of the, uh, siege engine. Other than it being a siege engine. Anyway, looks like the first tower is in pretty bad shape, dropping down about 50% HP, and it looks like that one will fall out here. The enemy have foolishly moved in some marauder horses with throwing axes into range of the walls, which means the dark shards will absolutely rip them apart, probably before they can get too many of those uh, throwing axes in our uh, over the walls. Uh, that said, that's only the beginning. Here comes the battering ram, this time I can remember it, as well as all those troops but they are going to get hit by all of our towers together with the uh, uh, together with the dark shards and their continuation of fire so far nobody has reached those walls yet Alrighty, and looks like those marauders with great axes are not having a great time great axes not a great time Oh, look at all those uh, reaper bolts reaper bolts I guess from all of those towers Heck of an amount. Too bad that they can't separate into like multiple shots like the uh, like the Reaper bolt throwers can, just to rip apart enemy infantry. But anyway, it's looking fairly well for us over on this side as the ram is nearly done for, or at the very least those pushing the ram are nearly done for, and if they drop it, we might be able to knock the ram out. Over on this side, the first of the enemy towers has been destroyed, though the enemy troops are largely fine, and it does look like the second tower will actually be getting here, so we will have to fight it. Uh, thus, we're 
going to move away our units or have already moved away our units of crossbows or dark shards from this side and have instead deployed our single unit of uh, bleak swords here instead. Here comes the tower. Though we do have another tower of our own. You see that little fireball moving by. We have built a... Uh, a Tower, a siege tower, I don't know what to call these, the uh, buildable towers are right there, and hopefully it'll help out if it can actually land a shot. Alrighty, enemies on the walls now, but if we can get a good uh, AoE hit in there, that's going to absolutely wreck those poor marauders. Now, that was just a little bit wide. Seems like it's hitting the tower instead of the, uh, and the marauders themselves. I do believe our Beastmaster is in here as well. No, he's not uh, very strong. Ooh, there we go. The AoE hit is in there. And in the meantime, let's see what's going on out here. The enemy Marauders with Great Weapons dead, dead, and the other one is dead. We do still have a Marauder Hunters with Javelin unit out there. And the enemy Lord is climbing the walls as well. That said, the bounce of power is about... 75% in our favor at this point, and on this side, the enemy has been absolutely wrecked. Only their range units are climbing, and their range units, vigor reduced by having to climb the ladders, will have no chance, even against the dark shards, much less the enemy spears, especially as we currently have murderous prowess active, just as the enemy reaches the walls. Beautiful. And will this one hit? Ah, no, not so much. All right, and just have to kill off these units, and I feel like the enemy lord will rout as soon as these guys are destroyed. Oh, and that sudden movement might mean, hey, another nice hit from the tower, and that sudden movement might mean they're nearly done for. I unfortunately can't get too close to them because the camera is wonky up on top of the walls, but it happens. Alrighty, and I believe that is that. These, these, uh, the enemy marauders are out, and the enemy lord is wavering. Army losses, exhausted, and the battle just like that is ours, with uh, with barely any losses whatsoever. All right, well, it looks like we didn't need a caster for this at all, and frankly, if it was a chill wind caster, it wouldn't have been very useful in this particular situation anyway, as on top of those walls, we wouldn't have been able to do anything about it. Oh, uh, look at all those uh, poor marauders uh, lying in the fields outside the towers. It's edgy as heck, but I really do enjoy Dark Elf architecture. It's also very, very similar to uh, Dark Eldar architecture in uh, 40k, so there's a lot of... Uh there's a lot of echoing of that, whereas High Elves and Eldar architecture are pretty darn different from each other. But, like, you could absolutely find, like, from a distance, if you told me this was Kamarach and uh, uh, not, uh, not a random Dark Elf city, you wouldn't really be able to tell. Alrighty, well anyway, we're at max speed now, just chasing around a few more troops. The more we kill, the less we'll have to deal with uh, next, well, I guess not next turn, but uh, when they inevitably come back for this place. All right, there we are. Apparently a close victory. I don't know by what metric the AI thinks this was a close victory. Probably due solely to the... Uh, uh, oh, some lovely decorations along the, uh, along the edge of this. Good job. I would say, I was about to say Dark Elven Artisans, but uh, no, it's probably Dwarven Artisans that did this all. Uh, anyway, uh, close victory probably by the metric of ammunition lost or expended by our Dark Shards and nothing else. Alrighty, well, poor Welch and the Mung, only 16 units lost, they uh, ultimately failed to take our settlement. This is partially because of SFO, which makes uh, sieges more difficult for both the player and the AI. It just makes sieges better in general, on top of the fact that... Uh, uh, the towers, well, I guess this is part of the whole siege thing, the towers uh, can arc over everything and don't miss, like, 90% of their shots. Uh, the towers that are built, I mean. Anyway, we got ourselves a decent amount of money or a decent amount of slaves, both of which could be, well, decent. Uh, we're still trying to rekindle our economy, and I think we're still gonna have to go for money, although... 227 is hard to pass by. It's half a diktat for 10 turns. Now you know what? Enslave. Enslave. Screw it. 
Uh, never mind. Hey, a mission successful for the Ancestral Throng. I wonder how much allegiance we have with these guys now. Uh, just out of curiosity. We got 96 with Hag Grief, but I don't think we can build anything useful out of them. Hey, another mission as well. 46 with the Ancestral Throng. Ooh, we're gonna soon be able to get uh, a Dwarfen unit. So also keep an eye on our uh, on our allies stuff, because once they get certain high-level buildings, we might want to, uh, well, build some of their stuff. Anyway, with that, we are out of time, and I am going to have to call the episode here. Uh, next time, we continue the destruction of the Hmong, and in fact should complete the destruction of the Hmong, and then we'll have to decide what to do. Most likely, we're going to attack Sigvald here, but there is also a chance that we instead go south and attack the uh, Blacklight Tower and Nagrith. In fact, you guys let me know what you think about those two props. Positions. They both have their merits, in my opinion. And we're pro- oh, wow, this place is gonna rebel. Uh, they both have their merits, in my opinion, and I think both would work out decently, because we can always- Huh. I mean, Malekith might actually be able to destroy Nagareth by the time that Hellebron loops back around all the way to Sigvald, in which case we could, in theory, do both. Uh, but anyway, we'll have to figure out if that works out next time, so stay tuned for more Malekith and all the Edge. And don't forget to leave a like and comment, especially to the Threshold. All glory to the algorithm, and thanks for watching.